Fano, no my hooky my uh, to planting seeds. Uh, very stoked uh, to have uh, someone who has been such a uh, mentor to me, uh, to a kind of to me in this whole space of, I guess, just this journey of being in business or this journey of, I'm um, just trying to be a better man. Um, and it's just an honour to have you in here, brother Brits. No my. Oh, kia ora, brother. It's a, it's a, it's an honour to be here with you and. You know, having this call at all with you, bro. Bro, we've been, um, you know, on this little huarahi for some time now. And um, I always used to sort of like see you, you know, being friends with your younger sister, Paretai. And, um, you know, being in part of um, the club rugby. And, you know, you were always sort of at a taumata that was like very um, inspirational. And just a positive role model in, from, in my eyes, bro. And then naturally me coming into having a food trailer and being in the food space it was just natural that you were also there at that stage so um it feels like just one of those sort of full circle moments and to be able to share this connection in this way bro i'm really looking forward to the wānanga and the kōrero that comes me too brother very humbling <laughs> <laughs> and so um also want to do a big mihi to ake accounting um they are going to be um sponsoring a couple of the episodes um for planting seeds and i've been with Aki Accounting ever since I've been in business and they've got this beautiful wairua, beautiful energy within their firm um, and it's taken me some time to understand accounting when it comes to the whole Pākehi business side of things and they've just been very um, warming and very understanding and have mm. been very helpful along the journey so big mahitake accounting you'll see something in the link um, where there's going to be a few pages of, of how you can approach um, your business and, and get a good head start. So, Emihanakia Accounting and the Bro Brits is one of the directors at that firm, but we'll get more into that corridor as, as we get down, but just wanted to do that, Mihi. Sure. And so, brother, um, you know, like, what's been happening uh, for you and, um, you know, where, where are you at at this point in time, bro? Yeah, at this point in time, um, just... Uh, just struggling to say no to people, so well. always, always saying yes, and you know, um, I'm easily bought into people's journeys, um, even if it's just to try and you know kickstart something for them and you know get them off on the on the right steed, making sure that their grounding is is true to themselves, um, true to their partners, and true to their family. Um, it's That's so you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. When you're yeah. saying that, I'm like, bro, that but, is actually you, bro. <laughs> um, one of my one of my bros, and I helped him similar to you, um, in the medicinal cannabis space. Um, uh, touch bases with him, and he's like, bro, you know, your 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 heart's too bigger. You know, you 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 need to le- learn to say no. You should have said no to me when, you know, when when we started. Um, when I started assisting him in in his business, because um, he could see the you know the big obstacles that was in front of him, and you know although he needed that assistance and that monarchy to to you know get to where he is today, um, you know I I really had to you know um, drop tools to a certain degree in the system and then you know look to pick them up and it doesn't work uh, majority of the time um, and. I know, I know this is a little bit different to um, the way we do things at Ake, but, you know, as Māori moving into um, a space that is, you know, foreign. Um, and In this context uh, anyway, yeah. In this context, bro. Yeah, in this context, um, foreign. And um, it, it can be a, a, a trap or it, it can lead you astray in, um, into areas that, you know, aren't ideal. So for me, you know, I take it personally, you know, when someone comes to me and say, says, oh, I just need a hand with this, you know, and uh, te mea, te mea, whatever the kaupapa is, I will try my best to try and get them off, off on the on the right steed. But, yeah, um, to, to my own detriment your, as well. It's yeah. like to your detriment, but it just, it, there must be something in your wairua mm. that just really enjoys seeing your people win, bro, or mm. seeing them just at least having some kind of afi. Yeah. Has that always just been your nature? Because when I think about you, bro, I've, I've always felt that too. Yeah. You know, like, where does that even come from for you, bro? You know, because yeah. it feels so natural, even like, as you said, it's at your detriment sometimes. Mm. But 
I don't, I don't just don't think there's anything better than seeing your people succeed. Bro, exactly. You know? exactly. <laughs> I, I totally agree, especially our rangatai, especially your generation. I think your generation has the right for Carl to push us to the next tomata, like you said. Your generation. Um, so, you know, for me, where does it stem from? It, it definitely came from my parents and my grandparents. Um, you look at my grandparents and the most humblest people, you know, they went, they, they're not ones to put themselves out, but um, for them it was uh, hapu first, you know. So, you know, the cousins and the um, aunties and uncles, you know, always at the top of my mind is my hapu is, you know, how can we progress as a hapu? Looking looking for jobs, as simple as that, looking for jobs that um, my cousins and my whanau and my hapu are good at. Wow. So, yeah, it's... It's always, you know, evolving and, you know, things change, circumstances change, but, you know, the as long as your your kaupapa is tuturu, you know, koina, you're, it's you're going be. down the right huarahi. And I've heard stories of, you know, your kaumatua and just how connected they were to their mara and, mm. and just the kind of mahi that they were able to put in and the long journeys you fellas like went on to, you know, share your fellas like taonga and, and mara to, to the motu whanui. And so like talk a little bit about that as a young fella, bro, just stacking the trailers and stacking <laughs> the trucks, bro. Yeah. Um, yeah. My, my childhood, you know, I look on it fondly, you know, it's um, um, working with, my cousins especially um, at that, that age, you know, we didn't think it was working, you know, we were just, you know, there to do a job, but it was the actual spending of the time together that really strengthened us as cousins. And um, so, you know, when when you're in that sort of, um, I suppose, mindset, you know, you're not really working, um, you're enjoying yourself. So really that, that really stems from um, my grandparents' um, um, my my father's side on the Mara side, um, and at, out at two nine a one, um, so we were growing things like um, kamu kamu, um, and there's a really nice story about the kamu kamu that my uh, koro was was growing. It's a, a originated from Multiti Island. Whoa. yeah. So you know, uh, there's a, obviously obligation. A to, yeah, to a a papa and an obligation to look after that taonga for the next generations. So you know. Um, my my childhood um, consisted of mahi, but also being um, understanding what we were doing and um, trying to, um, you know, look at that family unit, how we can all progress as a family unit, and not only on my on my dad's side, but also on my mum's side. You know, um, I was very lucky um, to be brought up with uh, my papa, um, uh, Bob Job. Um, not from this area, but was able to create little businesses. Man, he was a hustler. True, eh? He was a hustler. Back in, just in him. back in the 80s and 70s, bro, he was, you know, okay, what's something that, that's new that, you know, can get me to the next next step? And so he was trying things like um, um, uh, soft drink um, dispensaries. The I little think. vendors yeah, and all man. of that. What? So he had several of them around town. Um, one at the squash club and... Um, one up at Paro Club Rooms and a few other places. I think one was at Marist even. Um, bro, those are like, there's like a nostalgic feeling, eh, to yeah, those bro. little dispensers, eh? Yeah. Like the big Coke symbol <laughs> on it and you've got the Sprite, the yeah. Lyft, the Coke and then the little buttons, eh? Yeah, bro. <laughs> Especially when, you know, a can of Coke uh, was 60 cents when, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, back in those days. But, you know, so, you know, my experience is, you know, from my childhood, um, you know, my grandfather, you know, doing the dispensaries, I was um, I was engaged in, you know, um, easy economics, basic economics, basic accounting, you know, my papa talking about money to me. So, you know, there was wow. that side of thing. Um, um, a lot of the business, you know, stock take, you know, um, branding, marketing, you know, that was, I was involved with that without knowing. Wow, and then if I was to go back to uh, my father's um, side in the situation there, um, we were market gardeners there. So once again, we were brought up with money around us, and although we didn't have too much money because you know it was going to um, the main cop or the main drive at that point was to try and get uh, my grandparents back over to Motiti Island because that's where they wanted True. to retire. So yeah, we were really pushing to make um, to feather their nest and ensure that that transition happened and. 
that was one of the goals that we achieved as a whanau, which was cool. Man. Yeah. So, so you fellas got a homestead on, on the island? We got a homestead on the island, bro. Babe, so, that is beautiful. Yeah, bro. And um, so, you know, we were, um, our, our, our week consisted of, um, you know, after school or, or holidays, all of us, and I'm, uh, and I'm saying there's probably 15 to 20 co- first cousins that would rock up to the farm and would be the, you know. Be out there, eh? Be out there. Picking there's something watermelon, special picking about kum-kum. that. Because, you know, even just having, like, you think about this generation, bro, it's hard for them to bloody do anything. Yeah, you know what I mean? But as I see that as well, there is a lack of connection to our wider whanau. Yep. You know, I can even see it in my whanau. Like, when I used to grow up and, and my my papa's brother, Uncle Mac, he, they were running a garden over in Waiotahi, between Waiotahi and Opotski. And we went there and it was us and... Um, my cousins and we went there every summer bro, yeah, bro. and that whanau we just got close mm. you know but then i look at like my other whanau and when we're not connecting in those times those connections just aren't as strong mm. and so to hear your kroa and um they had that vision of you know here's this mahi but we can bring our whanau together mm. and you guys having that sort of Mindset around Man we're in here We're doing the mahi But we can play around With each other We can have that ngaho aspect exactly that, right, As we were bro. talking about yeah. before So And to know that Those connections Are even strong now Like mm. bro That's beautiful to hear man Yeah So really pushing um, You know Those family ties Our whakapapa You know And that To me Differentiates You know A A non maori business To a Māori business Is You know We as Māori Have this Unique taonga that we are able to, you know, utilize and add to, and you know, make it, you know, um, make it really stand out within the, within your business. Yeah, you know, yeah. and that's your fucker papa. You know, understanding your fucker papa, even if it's, you know, one one step out. You know, you know. So you've got your call, then you've got you take a one step out, then you've got your first cousins and all um, all that, and then you take another step, then possibly another whānau or hapu. You know, just taking those steps out and, and really understanding the, the what makes that up. Yeah, you know? and I think that's important too. And, and even just like outside of like what you're talking about, but when we think about like papa in a business context, there's a lot of mana and there's a lot of confidence and mm. there's a lot of groundedness. Yep. Particularly when we think about business, it's actually like there's, there's this sort of like um, trophy, shiny, um, glamorous way of looking at business at the moment, mm. but you and I both know it's not all sunshine and rainbows, no. right? There's a lot of pressure. There's yep. a lot of moments of being overwhelmed. There's a lot of moments of feeling insecure, feeling not good enough. There's a lot of just weight that mm. can just be carried on our shoulders and taking up a lot of space in our minds. Yep. And Fucka Papa, I believe, can give us a sense of groundedness and strength within those moments mm. as we navigate through this. So, you know, like, I know this is a big quarter for you, bro, when we think about, you know, our mental well being when it comes to um, just stepping into entrepreneurship or business or trying to create something because there are layers. It's not mm. just your idea isn't just going to happen like exactly. that and you're going to be in the position that you think you're going to be in, yep. Carl. It's yep. not like that. So, like, talk about it, bro. Yeah, well, uh, a lot of our people um, um, stumble into, you know, thinking that, you know, I've got a, I've got the greatest idea. It's going to change the world, you know, and it, it, it may do. But, yeah, it's uh, um, a lot of people forget the other things that are associated with, you know, running a business. So uh, the mental health side of it is huge at the moment. Um, even myself, you know, I felt the burnout um, a couple of years ago. Um, just, uh, I, I would say probably just before post-COVID, um, the first lockdown. And, um, you know, yeah, you, you certainly go down some dark, dark and ugly places, bro. And, um, you know, the... Uh, it seemed like the naysayers, you know, who throughout all my life, bro, you can't do that. You're only good for this. You know, trying to pigeonhole me mm. and um, dictate to me how my life is going to look like. Mm. You know, that it was um, all of those sort of voices really, comp- you know, compounded. Mm. And, and, and you started to believe them bro, in that moment. Exactly. Eh, bro? And because, you know, we're in that lockdown period, it was, 
it was um it was the know, times two times three really as a, a exacerbated um you know the 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 cord or the noise in my in my head bro it was um yeah to the point you know i was like ah, you know you, you feel like you want to give up but you know um one of the things that really sort of um apart from my beautiful wife anita and you know she helped me through that and my parents and um her parents and um my first cousins you know it was that sort of support that you know through fucker papa that allowed me to you know I won't say that I'm back there. I've still got that that voice in my head, but it's um, I suppose allowing the mindset to change. Mm. You know, accepting that into into my life because you know I've got to accept it, otherwise it's going to get the better of me. Yeah, because it just gets louder and louder, louder if we're and trying louder, to if we're trying to like reject it. Mm. And, that, and that and that voice, you know, it's swinging around. It's tefa tefa. You know, it's uh, it it really um. The it's mana. there. Yeah, I, was, I had a podcast with um, one of the bros. His name's Te Aurerepe Whairangi. And he sort of talks to this bro like there's that um, voice in our head. And, and if we see it through a Maori lens, like it could be fiddle. Yeah. You know, because fiddle is, is, is the god of evil, the god of um, of challenges per se. But then we have Tani as well in our minds, which is like, nah, you are. You know, mm. there's that motivator, that inspiration, that visionary. And he said that there's this corridor that he created, and it's Taihiti, Taiwawa, Taifakaeatia. Um, no, it is impossible. No, you can't do it, but do it anyway. Mm. Right? Taifakaeatia. And that's so beautiful. that's what he sort of like sees in his mind is that um, it's that voice is going to always be there, but it's understanding that there's this other voice. And yeah. it's just how do you enable that to be stronger? Because, like you said, it's not going to go away. Yep. But it's what's the relationship that we mm. have to it? Mm. What I've been, the journey that I've been in at the moment, bro, it's all about trying to be more present. Yep. And that sort of speaks to minimizing as much head noise as possible and just being here present in this moment. So yeah. when I'm free of thought, whether it's I'm not thinking about what has happened. I'm not thinking about what's in the future. Mm. All I have is this moment. And what I can access in this moment is just like joy. There's, mm. It's easier to be grateful. It's easier to like make informed decisions. It's easier not to be. I've been released of having expectations or control of how things should be and just trying to be more focused on what is right in front of me. Yeah. And that's been so helpful for mm. me as I've been navigating through this because we do have pressure as um, trying to create a livelihood for ourselves and our family. Mm. Like we've got bills to pay. Exactly. We've got um, family. We've got commitments. We've got responsibilities, all of these other things. And now we've got this um, business that is what's going to help everything. Mm. And when that's not performing in the way that we want it, that's just the extra pressure that c- creates that noise to actually be something more. Yeah. No, and it, and it, it, if you leave it, that, that voice gets louder and louder, you know, so, you know. If you let it simmer, eh? Exactly, bro. Yeah. If you if you allow it to um, breathe breathe far up, you know, it, it's, it's, it's only going to get, it's only going to get bigger and, um, and, you know, my, my, especially my partner, she's like, you know, if you've got something to do it, do 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 now yeah um, so that that's the kind of person she she is she'll just go and do it but where i suppose for me because oh, the way i think I, and the way i am i like to give her like a 24 hour you know break just in just in case i know the person who i am i can very easily um take it the wrong way yeah you know um especially if it's not a a, a good cope up to talk about you know um, one one slight wrong word, and then you know that bridge is burnt. Mm-hmm. So you know it's that's it. And and I just wanted to like double back to just how you struggle to say no. Mm. I also realised earlier this year that being a keen learner, there's so much vulnerability in that as well, bro. Yep. Because we just don't like because I've been so interested in wanting to learn, like say, and in investing in other things. Um, I have been led down a wrong path where it actually like stung me, you mm. know, thinking that oh, yeah, the person that I'm learning from has my best interest at heart and is really like sharing beautiful knowledge. And mm. because of my keenness, it took me down a path. And I believe that's 
made me realize that our keenness to learn has so much vulnerability. And so yeah. do you feel that that creates in your journey as well around always saying yes, there's vulnerability in that because one, you can burn out and it yeah. might, because you want to see people succeed, but a lot of it's on them mm. and you might get let down with them, not even necessarily pursuing it from that first conversation that you had. Right. Yep. Yeah. Now that, um, that, vuln- that vulnerability, um, so, you know, that what what someone comes to you with an idea and that idea, you know, is just an idea at that, at that initial stage. And so, you know, when, when I come into the situation and I see that vision and we start talking about that vision and it starts rolling and it starts taking this shape and, um, you know, it's creating its own modi, you know, it's... You know, for me, of of the the, the reason, uh, the main reason why I feel that I I feel like I should be saying yes is that I've helped to create that moody within. Yeah. You know, so um, yeah, and, and uh, there's difficulties in that, and but when when that takes shape, it's it's beautiful. You know, they you know someone you really care about, someone that you've had interaction with, they're succeeding in those initial stages and. Um, what I, you know, um, when I left university at Victoria University, um, t- to me there was so much bad kopapa around uh, tikanga Māori and Māori in general. You know, I I felt obligated or not to the tenth degree, but I felt obligated within myself that you know we have to start creating something that you know um, that has that that eliminates all this negative, yeah, yeah, negative yeah. stuff around and once again it impacts on um what you're trying to create and um, and we have the capacity to do so as maori you uh, know exactly like and right i believe on. their narrative is is starting to change and i look around and there are a lot of like pakihi maori who are just adding so much value bro, bro. to community and to their own whanau and and, and i love to yeah. see it bro you know a lot of our whanau you know it's yeah but uh They've, a lot of our whānau have gone away and you know received these extra um, this extra knowledge and you know information, which is cool. So there's a lot of us sort of moving into those professional sort of spaces and mm. um, really making change. and And I think that's necessary to um, to uh, uh, inflict or entrench you know proper change. Yeah. So you know, changing laws, changing the way we do um, accounting changing the way we do basic economics so there's a lot of lot of us that are sort of pushing through that at the moment and that's cool but there are other services that you know other areas that you know we could really help and push and um and if we were to take the financial you know reward away from a business bro (laughs) and we you know think about um what makes a good day for myself it's not to me, it's not so much the financial reward; nah. it's necessary. Yeah. But you know, being relevant and like we said to you know previously, being relevant today, you know, it's also you know understanding wins and um, understanding um, well wins within the business, but also understanding um, what's what's the next steps and how to progress. How do we become a better person? How do we become a better business? Yeah. So, but in in terms of you know. Pākehi Māori, yep, that's, that's you know, making good changes there, uh, the road's still long there, but other areas like um, Haora, you know, our kai, you know, there's a, there's a lot of areas that we can brush up on. Oh, 100%. Be, improve our, our whare. You know, I, um, I think it's one of our um, biggest travesties is that, you know, we've got, you know, Māori have... Um, you know, we've lost a lot, don't get me wrong, and we need to protect what we've got. But we also need to look at ways to help our unfortunate whānau. You know, maybe it's through housing, maybe it's through mahi, maybe mm. it's through kai, maybe it's... I think all of those are all, like, relevant, you know, yeah. and interconnected, you know, and we think about, um, we think about, you know, just some of the challenges that are out there, and, mm. and particularly in the climate that we're in at the moment, like, bro, you go into a shopping and you're going to buy like a 
basket full of car it's now the cost of a full trolley mm. you now go and put 20 bucks into your car it's now got to be 50 you know so mm. just our livelihood expenses have just fully increased but yet the challenges haven't improved at all it's exactly. actually like adding more weight there mm. and one thing that i want to come back to about what you're saying is that you know when we think about our hauora like that is mostly important i believe mm. it it helps us navigate anything that we're going through and like something that i've been very considering as i've been in this new season that i'm in is what am i prepared to because being in business you already got this naturally growth mindset mm. you're always thinking about you know the growth of the business or where you see it being or where you see yourself being or you think about the materialistic things that um sort of give the sense of oh yeah when i get there i'll be successful you know, but when I think about what that actually means for me, it's mm. there's a lot of sacrifice involved, yep. and that's looking at it through the business context. But man, I'm a husband, I'm a father, my own health so and well being. You know, there's so much more to me than all of these certain things. And so, am I am I in a position where I want to sacrifice those things? Because mm. when we think about all of the amazing like next level entrepreneurs of our day to day, mm. they have gone through their sacrifices and they're living a lavish lifestyle. And that's the cost of what it takes to get there. Yep. And when I think about my truth, my authenticity, is that actually where I want to be? Yeah. Am I okay with like being like 10 steps back and just being fully happy? And what, so what does that look like? Does mm. that mean that I can leave things on the table that I think would get me there? Yep. But if I leave things on the table, perhaps I just have more time to be more joyful. Mm. Perhaps I can see more things and it might not lead me there, but it might lead me to something better. Exactly. You know, so just mm. having more faith in, in, in the here and now and just coming back to like what's true for me and what's going to be meaningful for me and my family and the growth of mm. the parky that I've got going on rather than trying to be coincide with our version of what we believe a successful business exactly, is. Bro. So mm. just taking those things into consideration in our own way, I feel is what's going to keep us toe within our own well-being, mm. right? Mentally, physically, spiritually. Yep, yeah. It's exactly all connected. Right. Yeah. Um, it just you know this uh, this little corridor that we're having here just reminded me of a um, a time when I was um, we were heading down the coast me and um, a colleague of mine and um, the co for when we were going down the coast is looking at opportunities to uh, for the whenua and um, for for the hapu to to look at um, you know um, entering into what whatever industry they were wanting to do kumara um, avocados timia well water timia 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 um, but um, the second stop, we um, so we were traveling down the coast. We were stopping off at different Fano houses, and you know, starting to get caught at all. You know, um, letting them allow allow us to talk about their journey and where they were wanting to go. And um, this particular one, we were sitting in this house, and um, you know, I just sort of looked around, and you know, it was pretty basic footy. You know, didn't have too much, and. Um, our, our, our court it all started, and they were wanting to look into getting kumara and you know other mara happening. And uh, I, I turned to the girl. There was a um, she must have been about seven or eight, and she had the biggest smile on her face. And I was you know I was like, well, you know, um, there, there must be something happening, you know, for her to feel so great. And you know, it was such a beautiful smile. You know, mm-hmm. you, everybody saw it. So it exactly. So you know, I asked the question. Oh, you know. Why are you so happy? And she's like, "Oh, it's my birthday tomorrow." And I and I was like, "Oh, happy birthday! What do you want? To, you know, what what did you want to um, receive for your birthday?" And she's like, "Oh, nah, we're getting hot water tomorrow." Uh, and she was happy, bro. Perspective, bro. Eh? And so, you know, I look at our people, and we're trying to keep up with the Joneses, and you know, we've we've gone away from you know. Another story, and it it it, it, it um, connects. But uh, I was at a uh, wānana with our hapu, and um, our rangatahi come to us and said, um, "You know, our biggest ob- obstacle of understanding our tribal of Te Patua is that where's the trust?" Mm. So that's another thing. That's another huge kopapa that seems to be lacking, even with. And our own Within, hapu. Exactly, iwi. Bro. Iwi, whanau, Our own people. You know, and that allows all this 
the, the, the noise that we mentioned, you know, to, to get bigger and bigger and this mistrust is leading to misinformation and, you know, we're getting away from who we are as a people, as a... You because know. of like what we're seeing as exactly. the shiny object, eh, bro? Exactly, bro. We're failing to see like yeah. who we actually this, are. This globalization, you know, you know, it's good to that, that there's an avenue for our people to you know step out into the world. And uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying that's the wrong hura here to go down, but you know, it's it's the, blinding the fundamentals, as well. The, the fundamentals of you know actual person. I think we need to start really looking and bearing and you know at ourselves. And you know, not in, um, not in just the physical attriment, but also your mental attriment that you know we were touching on previously as well, bro. It's it, it's all interconnected, and I just want to be like that girl, bro. You know, yeah. big smile on my face, and I'm happy to have hot water tomorrow. It's like, like honestly, bro, it's so um, it's so like humbling and beautiful to like hear stories like mm. that and. Like I'm reading a book at the moment called The Power of Now and it just speaks to that like mm. so um, like beautifully that, you know, our mind not only takes us into a space of feeling as though um, we aren't good enough, mm. but sometimes we think about the future mm. because it's a distraction from our reality. Yep. You know, I when agree. I get there, then I'll be happy. Exactly. When I have that, oh, then I might be a bit joyful. But yep. everything that is external is only short-lived. Yep. Every time you get a new car, it feels great for the first week, month, maybe a year until there's another new model. Yep. We can see or it in our phones. That one. So it's always short-lived. So how do we find that more eternal joy, mm. happiness? And I believe we saw it in that young wahine. Exactly. You know, it's it's all about, you know, like what are the small, simple things that we can find joy in mm. and really be present with it and it's really reshaped not necessarily my thinking but more so my feeling mm. you know that speaks to another layer how, of yeah how of, do we foster it. that how yeah. do we promote that you know that's the stuff that's i the, think it's the being the bro yeah it's the being just as our you know mm. Mm. was just being it yeah she didn't have to like really do too much else outside of just sharing why she was so joyful yep. but you noticed it because she was joyful so it's in the being that we foster mm. that way of sort of um participating or or living in a certain way and i think it, it helps us whether it's in business whether it's in our fano, whether it's in um, our friendships whether it's in anything that we express the more that we can be in that space i mm. feel the more fulfilled we become yep you know? i totally agree and it's you know understanding oneself you know, mm. understanding one's skill sets. hundred. You know. Um, Do you feel like, um, you know, when, you know, I think about, you know, you, you say, you're sort of saying, can't say no to certain things, but I see this other side of you, bro, where you're just a real, like, hotutu, playful kind of character, yeah, bro, bro, you know? Like, that's so natural for you. Every time that we catch up, you're always just, like, bloody talking jokes and... Mm. It's never serious, bro. That's probably the most serious I've ever, like, really seen you, you know, yeah. like, in this kind of quarter. Usually, we've got jokes happening yeah. and, like, you're, like, putting yourself down. You're putting all everything else down, like, giving me shit, you know. Like, that's so natural for you, bro. Like, <laughs> like what is, like... You make me sound like a terrible person. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but it's more so your playfulness, bro, mm. you know. And I think that's what everyone... And, and you can definitely see it within um, your Ake space, you know. Like, you're just... You know, that guy that just brings the energy or, you know, brings smiles. And so, mm. you know, I think, again, it's just coming down to your caring, like, wairua. But, you know, like, have, have you noticed that in you, bro? Yeah, like, that you're just more vangaho and you like to just be a bit more playful and a bit more at mm. ease? There's a, there's, there's a reasoning behind it. And I think I actually um, received that gift from my dad. He's very, very, <laughs> yeah. he's, 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 he's very, very quick-witted, bro. Yeah. And I have to, you know, if I'm gonna, you know, be on a equal uh, equilibrium with him, I need to be just as witty or even wittier. Yeah. So, you know, I, at every chance, bro, and, it, and especially if it's in a context where you know we're bros or we're mates yeah, or right. your whanau, you know, you know, everything goes, and it, I, I think it allows not only that, you know, for us to, you know, the, the humbleness because um, um, you're allowing yourself to be out there, you know. Uh, the humbleness of of our people, but you know, in order to understand the humbleness, I think you need to b 
be a little bit. Um, you, you have to be um, allow yourself to be yeah. put it put on. Put it, step, yeah, you know? allow it to be you know smacked a bit because it's yeah. it, it, you know it, it almost sounds um, uh, wrong, but. But it's taken in a way in the context. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like yeah. when we can do it together because, you know, we understand and that that's what it is. Nah, yeah. nah. Yeah. And I think the more people you sort of like, because I, I, I just love Māori humor, bro. bro I don't it's the funniest, yeah. you know, like we're just so witty, so quick. There's these little dry jokes or like if we know like certain people in a certain way, we can sort of like do little things and then it comes back in. (laughs) And that's what I think we, if we can give it, like we better know how to receive it too. When people like say something to me, like, Oh, like that's a good one. You know, like I actually see the playfulness in it. You know, if you stuffed up or you did something wrong, you know, allow yourself to, um, you know, take a bit of humble pie. Yeah. That's where the learnings are. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Um, I'm definitely not going to do that again because my dad just tore me up a new one, and I don't want that to ever happen again. Or yeah. my cousins are, you know, um, are too uh, wittier than me. That's never going to happen. So <laughs> <laughs> I love it, bro. Like me and me and the two of my few good bros, old Bubba and Tips. You know, we've been yeah. playing cards since we were bro, and like <laughs> everything, bro, is just all about just paying each other out. Bro. Yeah, yeah. You know, we gang up on one person, and then they gang up on me. It's just like the nature <laughs> yeah. of our yeah, friendship, friendship. But we yeah. know there's no boundaries, bro. Mm. We can say anything to one another, and yeah. we don't take it like too personally. It's mm. like we just take it for what it is, and yeah. it's just great to have those sort of meaningful connections as well, eh, bro? Yeah, but what that also allows is, you know, if we, we, we bring it back to this, you know, understanding one's skill sets, it also allows you to understand what skill sets you don't have, mm. and then acquiring those people, you know, not in, not in, not only in our personal lives, you know, like um, I want to be surrounded by people that are like-minded like me, um, and bring them in close so, you know, we can have that sort of situation, but in business context, that's the same, same scenario, you know, you understand your skill sets, um, what you're not good at, you look to bring people in, you know. So, um, allowing, allowing, allowing yourself um, to be true to yourself, like we mentioned previously, but also allowing yourself to um, receive, you know, help. Not trying to manaki. think that you need to do it exactly. all yourself, eh, bro? Yeah. So, within um, Aki accounting, if we can step back, and I'll put my Aki accounting port eye on. Um, there's, 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 we, we state that there's ten hats in every business. So from you know your directors, your shareholders to um, marketing, sales op, you know, operations. There's a, there's a lot of port eye, um under the Western context that you know is placed on you because you're the owner. Therefore, you know the bottom buck lies with you. But you know. Although that sounds daunting, there are people out there that are willing to help. Yeah, that are willing to wear that full time. You know, that, that are at the top of their game, you know, in, in their certain industry, you know, and all it takes is an email to open up the gates or, you know, I think, um, you know, if we were to touch back on that trust thing, um, you know, the, the lack of trust, I suppose, you know, that, that creeps in, you know, it's... Um, I feel there's a lot of ego involved too. Like I can even see it in myself at times, you know, when I was running a business and mm. I always felt like I had to wear all of the hats mm. and I just felt, nah, if it wasn't done that way, then oh, like the business isn't going to do well, you mm. know, and that's because of how attached I was to how everything ran. But it wasn't yeah. until I let go of some yeah. of that and gave space not only for you know, Hinepania to come and just sort of find her space in mm. it, but it actually enabled the business to go in a way smoother way. It's just like coming back to if we want to trust, if we want to release some of that um, expectation and just knowing that we can't wear all of the hats, mm. it's good to understand parts of every space, yep. but you don't have to be in every space. And it exactly. comes down to yeah. you as the owner. Can you let go of where you think the direction of the company is going to go mm. in order for you to receive the support that you need to take it to that place. Yeah, exactly right. That next level. But um, obviously there's key points to that as well, you know, allowing people into your space or, you know, what you've created and um, they understanding the, the vision and see where, where you want to go and how it's going to impact our community and all that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, therein lies the next bit of... Um, uh, who I suppose is um, 
once you've understand yourself and you understand your situation, it becomes easier for your puku to make those decisions. <laughs> so I'm one of those ones that, you know, if it feels right, you know, it's, um, you know, I, I will more than likely move in that space unless something tells me to, dif- you know, different. But bro, like to finish us off, bro, it would be cool to try and give some value to the whānau who have like come this far in the episode and they might have a little bit of a parky idea or they might be in a space but they might not necessarily have a plan or any goals. Like mm. what does it look like to have business goals, bro, or to um, – like how do you guys navigate that space if a client was to walk into Ake? How do you guys sort of like support them into understanding their business better? Um you know, having having goals and um, having a plan to, to achieve those goals. So setting yourself, which is KPIs, key performance indicators, um, having core values. You know, they all all add to your your um, your journey to to achieving your goals, especially um, in business where there's a lot more. There's a lot more regulation, a lot yeah. more accountability on you as the owner to, to perform. So. so there's so many times, eh, bro, where you can think about your business, you can think about what you know you should be doing, but you just don't do it. Yeah, exactly. You know, but yep. having like those KPIs, key performance indicators and having like core values, it's a way to measure if you're on track or not, you yeah, know. Whereas, exactly right. And the only thing that's preventing that is like – um you getting up and doing those things and there's in the context of like gym there's this corridor that goes um the heaviest weight is the front door yeah right and that's the sort of like same in this business context the easiest or the hardest is the first step yeah you know so it's just about you know bringing it back down to okay what is the direction where do you see yourself going what is the best case scenario of your business and it's succeeding right cool that's the see that as step ten. Mm. Now, what does step nine look like? What exactly. does step eight Bring look like? Brett, and start reverse mm. engineering all the way back to step one, yep. and that's where you'll start to see the KPIs. All right, I need to do this to measure me to see if I can get to step two. Yeah. You know, so you just work it all the way back rather than seeing that and being overwhelmed mm. and feeling separate from where you are to where that is. Yeah. You know, and making sure that those KPIs are weight bearing. Yeah, so they actually the actuals. Yeah. So you know, uh, you you've got your goal of wanting to achieve um, two million dollars, but then underneath, it's how you're going to achieve you're that two million dollars. Yeah, so yeah. my, you know, a KPI might be I want to, you know, my I want my business to generate a hundred hundred k um, uh, per month. So in theory, you know, if I'm going to get a hundred k per month, you know, that's going to take me. Uh, 25 grand 25, a week yeah. <laughs> you know and another way that i can sort of like give an actual practical way of looking at it is like you know i have ambition to have the top podcast in aotearoa you know mm. that's like my my goal that i've sort of like set for myself in this journey mm. so a kpi for me is like all right if i if that is the ambition like what does it look like to what i'm doing now okay what if i was to just do say four to six podcasts a month Right, that's a KPI. That's a key exactly, performance bro. indicator. And yep. if I do six podcasts every month, and then boom, that adds up to being six times twelve is what, whatever, <laughs> 66, 72. seventy-two. That's seventy podcasts over the year, you know. And yep. with me being able to have like good people on, me being able to sort of like spread and cast a net with meaningful conversation, it might not necessarily get me to the top in one year. But if mm. I do that consistently, yeah. well, that's going to be sort of some amazing steps, you know. Yeah. So that's just the key performance indicator yeah. in, in my life and what mm. I'm approaching at this point in time. Yeah. And, you know, and a, a, a key key point or another key um, um, area that, you know, I should really touch on is you know, uh, one's core values. Yeah. So, you know, um, when we created Ake, um, Ake Accounting, I wanted to make sure that our core values were at the centerpiece of, you know, everything we do. You know, this is who we are. You know, um, you can read it on the wall, you can read it on our website. You know, these people are obviously Māori. Their core values are Māori. But mm. those, those, having those core values allows you to, you know, always be true to yourself. And then allowing, you know, those core values to, inter, you know, Interact with your potential clients. That's they, right. They see they see your your core values. Oh shit! I relate to those. You know, I want to be a part of you know that um, accounting firm. Yeah. 
So getting clear on that eh, is, yeah. is very important as a business. But also um, your business core values might be different to your personal exactly. values. Yep. They you could know? be. They could yeah. be. So it's just, the, again, looking at your business as your business and, and hey, they might be the same. Mm. But just having some kind of, um, I guess, foundation. Right, I, I see values as a foundation either mm. to yourself or yep. to your business or to the things that you do. And as you said, the people who you interact with are most likely to share common values. Exactly. You know, and that's yeah. a good thing to sort of like highlight that represents, um, I guess, what your business represents, but also the direction that you're going in. And so, brother, this has been a, a beautiful Beautiful mm. catch up, my boy, and it's been choice to have this morning mm. and quarter about all of this. And so, but if there was any um, sort of like final quarter or that mm. that you might want to share with the listeners, we're just going to pass it over to you. Well, at this point in time, I think it's you know mine and your obligation to actually look to pass on you know what we've learnt to the next generation. So we're talking about you know in terms of business, I talk to my kids about tax. I talk to my kids about how money can work for you, how money can work for us. And, you know, I, I think those are those areas we need to be talking more with our rangatahi about, along with our whakapapa, along with our, um, you know, our taonga tuku iho, you know, the, you know, the things that we hold dear to us. That's right. You know, we need to be moving in um, a space or moving into spaces that allows us to breathe and spread further, bro. That, that, that's the way I see it. Well, that's so important because I, I, I reflect on what you said earlier around how your koro was sharing that with you at mm. such a young age. And I think even for me and I'm sure many other people, we never spoke about money on the table. You know, mm. it wasn't even something that was even normalized. And yeah. I feel, you know, when we can get a good head start and, and better understanding this currency of, of putia, it definitely gives us more confidence in, mm. in how we can better manage it. Because mm. that's what it comes down to. The yeah. better we understand it, the better we can manage it. And exactly. perhaps it's not about how much money we make, it's how much money we keep, you yep. know, or how exactly. can we make money grow. So it's yep. all of those kinds of cordial and it just helps stimulate our facade or a bit differently as opposed to just being someone that goes out and works mm. and trades time for money, yep. you know. And so those are beautiful cordial, bro, and also around tax. That's something that I'm still, <laughs> like, learning, but yep. just being under the guidance of Ake and having you here and just actually seeing like our whare set up, you know, you know, you saying that, hey, we can actually claim this mahi room that we have in our whare, mm. you know, under tax, which will minimize how much tax we pay at the end of the year, you know, so it's just how you see it for me is like understand the, the game that you're in and just being able to see how you can um, best leverage the spaces that you're in mm. to um, get your taxes right, but to also these ways where if you don't have it right, you're going to be paying more at the end. Exactly. You know, so yep. it's awesome that you're sort of like brought that up. And so thank you so much for coming on. Um, to everyone that has listened, um, if you're in the space, please look at the link in the description and you will see a document from Aki Accounting that might help you just get a good head start or might reaffirm that you're on the right path. Mm. So um, mihiana kia koe bro, mihiana to the firm and, and all of the kaimahi there. So Kaura. thank you for coming on. Ah, it's, a, it's been a total privilege, bro. Um, and sharing this knowledge and you know you and I talk about this all the time but you know it, it's uh, re- really fulfilling to be able to you know share it maybe with other ears that um, we we, oh, we haven't spoken to Kanui, to Kanui but you know I, I feel very um, privileged and humbled by um, um, being asked to be a part of this so I totally total call you um, uh, this co-papa that you're on and um, yeah nah, it's awesome too much, Man, bro. I'm thank keen, you so much for that. I'm keen to see what happens in um in your in your journey, bro. Yeah, bro. I'm um, I'm excited and um it's just great to be around good people, brother. So mihiana and, and to everybody else, thank you for so much for listening. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia ora.